Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're talking about the best vlogging setup for beginners that you could get for less than 200 pounds. Hello there, welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is the first time, if this is the first time you've seen me, my name's Mike. I've been making videos, been taking photos for eight years now, seven years, eight years, and it's been my full-time job for close to four years. So I have experience with cameras, but I wouldn't call myself a professional. Technically I am, but I don't consider myself all that techie. I don't know the ins and outs. A lot of the detail genuinely confuses me sometimes, and I don't know what's new anymore. There's so much good camera gear coming out. I sort of get lost in the high-end gear. I don't really know what's going on at the top end, but I do know the fundamentals, what you need to get started, what's the minimum requirements to produce a fairly decent video, and just the essentials for beginners, basically. I've been through that beginner stage of starting to make videos on YouTube. I've been through the beginner stage of starting to produce work for clients. So in this video, I'll go over some basic specs that you're gonna wanna need, gear that I would recommend for beginners, and how much it's actually gonna cost. Let's just jump straight into the details. You're gonna wanna need a camera that shoots in at least 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 high definition. This is the highest level of high definition before you enter 4K. Now, if you've heard of 4K, you're familiar with 4K, 4K cameras tend to be more expensive and not necessarily needed. If you've got a camera that shoots at 30 frames per second at 1080p, that's good enough, especially for YouTube. That's good enough right now. As I'm saying this, early 2020, I still post all my videos in 1080p. I still produce all my professional client work in 1080p. I actually don't have anything that records in 4K and I'm still up to industry standard, I guess. That might change soon. My next camera will definitely be an upgrade and probably will be 4K, most, most definitely. But as a beginner, as someone who's just getting started in vlogging, the minimum requirement, 1080p, 30 frames per second. You might be confused by me saying 1080p, but it's just the resolution of the footage. So it'll be 1920 horizontal by 1080 vertical. That's just the size of the video. When I say 30 frames per second, that's just the frame rate that the video clip will be recorded at. Most Hollywood films are shot at 24 frames or 30 frames. It just depends whereabouts you are in the world, whether TVs display 30 frames or 24 frames. 24 frames, 29 frames, 30 frames, it's, it's the same thing. Don't let me confuse you. From there on, you go upwards to 60 frames, 120 frames. And when you've got higher frame rate video, that just allows you to do slow motion, that allows you to slow the footage down. If you record at 50 frames, you slow that down by 50%, you end up with footage that is shown at 30 frames in slow motion. Hopefully that makes sense. But just something to add on to this is most phones actually film in 4K as well now. I've got an iPhone somewhere. My iPhone actually records in 4K at 120 frames, I think, which is absolutely bonkers, which my main camera that I'm filming with now doesn't even record at. But there's a lot of limitations with iPhones. I don't want to make this video too much about mobile phone videography and how to make videos on your phone because that's a whole other subject. So if you do want to get started like right now after you watch this video, or you want to go out tomorrow, well, no one can go out because we're in lockdown in the whole current situation. But in the future, when you're watching this video, when the world goes back to normal, your mobile phone will be great. And if you can't wait or you can't afford the next set of gear that I'm gonna list out in a minute, then your phone, like I said, is a great place to start. So let's actually talk about why you wanted to watch this video. Which camera would I recommend for beginners? What's the best setup for vlogging if you're just getting started? This is the Canon 700D, also known as the T5i, I think. Depends whereabouts in the world you are to how they title it. This actually has a flip out screen, which is why I massively recommend it. You know, for when you're vlogging, you can actually see yourself. That makes the whole process much easier. This camera was released in 2013, I think. Maybe 2000. 14. You can get this online for about 200, 300, 400 pounds, depending on the condition and where you're buying it. Let's just say cheapest possible 200 pounds you're gonna spend on getting a 700D, like I said, 1080p, 30 frames per second, flip screen as well, which is a massive bonus if you're vlogging, but they do get cheaper than that. A Canon T3i, which is also known as a Canon 600D, also films in 1080p, 30 frames. And you can actually grab a Canon T3i for 99 pounds. That was the first result that came up. Anywhere from 99 pounds all the way to 150 pounds, depending on the quality and where you buy it. But for less than 200 pounds, you can get a camera that films in high definition, 1080p, 30 frames, which is our minimum requirements. And it has a flip out screen. If you didn't want to flip out screen, but you still wanted high definition, 1080p and 30 frames, you can use a Canon 550D, also known as the T2i, I think. Now this doesn't have a flip out screen, but it does film in 1080p and it does film at 30 frames. And you can grab a 550D, a T2i, for about 80 pounds, 90 pounds, depending on the quality and where you buy it. That camera dates back to 2011, 2012, I think. We are going back a few years now, but the cameras still hold up high definition footage. Now we need to talk about lenses. Now this is the kit lens. I'm actually filming with the kit lens as well using the ATD now. The kit lens is 18 to 55 mil, lowest f-stop 
of 3.5, which is just the aperture. If that doesn't make any sense, a video will pop up here explaining um, settings within a camera and how to use them. So the kit lens is brilliant. I still use it all the time. I'm using it to film this video, definitely underrated. And you might be able to buy the kit lens with some of the cameras that I've just recommended. They might come as a bundle. If not, if you do buy just the body on its own, you can get a kit lens as well. And a Canon EF 18 to 55 kit lens will set you back around 40 to 75 pounds. That's what I saw when I Googled very quickly. So for 40 pounds roughly, you can get a quite a wide lens, 18 mil is quite wide, all the way to 55, which is fairly good zoom for beginners. You won't need to go any more zooms than 55 if it's your first time making videos. We've got a camera body, we've got our lens, now we need to talk about the audio. This is the Rode Video Micro, I think it's called. It comes with a little horseshoe mark, don't know if you can see that on there, and that simply slides onto the top of your camera body and then plugs straight in to the side of the camera. Then you've got your Rode Video Micro with a dead cat on. It just sounds great, doesn't it? Every time people say, what's that on top? What's that fluffy thing on top of your camera? I just call it a dead cat and they're like, what? Now the Rode Video Micro Pro is a directional microphone. So this records the audio directly in front of it. If you're behind it, the audio is not great. This is great for interviews. This is great if you're vlogging, which is the whole point of this video, the microphone is going to pick up exactly what's in front of it. And this dead cat that I just mentioned is a protector of wind. <laughs> sounds like a superpower. It will protect your audio against the wind so it doesn't sound horrible. Um, I've used this in some of the worst conditions of wind and it actually holds up quite well. So the main point, how much is this gonna cost? About 35 pounds, between 30 pounds and 50 pounds, depending on where you buy it and the condition of it, if it's used or not. For 35 pounds, you can dramatically increase the audio of your videos and have protection from wind. Sounds like a superpower again. Now I'm being really specific with the video, but I'm sure this might help a few people. You need an SD card. An SD card will set you back about 10 to 15 pounds. This is a 32 gigabyte SD card. You will need one of these. If you're a beginner watching this video, this goes into the camera, this records the footage, all the files get stored on here, then you put this onto a computer afterwards. This is a 32 gig. I'm using a 128 gig to film this video, which, which is a lot. You don't need, you don't necessarily need that much. Or even 64 gig if you're just getting started with videos and your videos might be quite short. So a 32 gig is probably sufficient, but you can go 64, 120, and the price will go up from there. And then final thing, you're gonna need a battery, obviously, to run the camera. A Canon battery for the 700D, which I think is the same battery for the T2i and the T3i, they'll set you back about 10 to 15 pounds. Um, so getting a handful of them is probably a good idea. I think that rounds up to 118, let me check my notes, 189 pounds, I think. Let's just say we're estimating here and that was like the world's cheapest option. Maybe that's not available right now, but all those products won't be too much more expensive than what I've mentioned. So you might be looking to spend 190 pounds all the way up to maybe 300 pounds if you were to get everything I've just mentioned in good quality. Good video quality, good audio quality, a flip screen if you get in a T3i or a 700D, you're away, you can start making videos, you can start vlogging pretty much immediately. The gear that you use doesn't determine how good the quality of your videos will be. You know, storytelling, composition, lighting there's a whole you know the film industry is huge me making a 10 minute video on YouTube explaining you know spending a few hundred quid is not gonna make you the best filmmaker you actually do need to go and learn the process of making videos but there's just some recommendations for me if you was looking on what cameras to actually buy you know like where do you get started well that right there is a setup that I would definitely recommend to anyone getting started in making videos or vlogging or whatever you're doing a link will pop up here for you to watch some of my videos on how to edit so if you're interested in the post-production process after you've gone out in field and shot and film some stuff and you want to learn how to edit then this playlist will teach you some of the basics that's pretty much it i'll see you in the next video peace out